Hello, it's Crafty Carol here with another card for Watercolour Month. Um, and this is a panel card, got the idea from the wonderful Jan Brown. Um, and this just uses a single panel, but it, the way it's cut makes the card a little bit more wow, I suppose, is the best way to look at it. So measurements are important, so I'll go through those in detail as we do it. But I really wanted to focus on the watercolour background that I've made for this card. I'm not going to do the same one again. I'm actually going to, I don't know that, oh, I'll just put it out of the way for now. I'm actually going to use um, a, a, a Knight of Navy colour scheme. I've already cut some of the bits. So what you need for this card, you need, obviously, a plain card base. That's basic white and I've already done my envelope and actually stamped it. I'm using a retired stamp set here um, because this is actually going to be a birthday card for my husband uh, who's into sailing so um, I've used that. I'm keeping that old set to do, do things for him. So I'm going, you'll notice on this one I've actually done layers on the front um, and on the inside here and uh, I've already cut those layers. So normal card base which is a uh, 21 by 14.8, scored at 10 and a half. And then the panels, this one is 10 by 14.3. And then and they're both the same, one for the inside and one for the outside. And then the um, white panels are on top, and I've already stamped these ready for the card, uh, outside and inside, same size. And these are uh, nine and a half by 13.8. So those are all the bits. I've also got the boat I want to put in. I've already stamped and die cut that for the top, but I want to focus on making the actual card and showing you uh, the watercolour. I just need a bit of kitchen roll, just a sec. <laughs> Right. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to focus on the watercolour technique for the card. So I've got a piece of watercolour card, which is, good question, how big is that? Let me just measure it. Uh, four and nearly three quarters <laughs> by uh, nearly four. Yeah, about four inches. So something like that. We're going to cut it down anyway when we've done. So um, mark on that. So I'll just use the other side. There we go. No, I won't. I'll use that side. Right. <laughs> so I want to show you the, the way I do the watercolouring. And to do that, I use a stamping block and my ink pads. So I've got a range of ink pads here. I've got Mint Macaron and um, Pool Party for the sea. And I'm going to do a sky with Balmy Blue. So how we do that is I just open the pad and then I'm going to actually just stamp on the pad with the block, which transfers the colour to the block. That means I'm not putting water anywhere near my ink pads which is really important um, and I'm just using my aqua painter, so my old aqua painter, uh, just to pick up the colour from that block. Just check you've got that yes in, in view and then I'm going to transfer it to the watercolour paper and I'm just going to move it around with the colour so just put it on and then move it around with the colour. I put quite a lot of colour on to move it, uh, quite a lot of water with the colour so I can move it around and and this is going to be the sky, so we'll just colour in the sky like that. About half of it, something like that. And it doesn't matter if it's a little bit streaky because that's what skies are. So then I'm going to just clean that. There we go. And then I'm going to get my uh, pool party. And exactly the same with that. So I just use a little bit of kitchen roll um, because it's easy to then clean the stamp, the, the block as well. And I can just use it to dab my aqua painter on to take any colour off. So I'm not mixing my colours. So now I'm picking up my pool party. Ooh. And I'm going to do the same thing with that. Just moving it around the place. And again. I want it a little bit splodgy because this is C, it needs to look a little bit like this. There we go. Just moving around with my aqua painter. More or less a line for a horizon, which has just come, just arrived naturally. Just make sure we've got enough colour there at the side. It's not going off. There we go. And I'm just going to, again, clean the block on my piece of kitchen towel. 
And then finally, I'm going to use some mint macaron just at the bottom here, just to add a little bit more colour there. So same thing again, picking up the colour and just popping it on here. And then I'm going to mix these two colours in a little bit more here. There we go. I've got the slightly deeper green at the bottom here. Oop. Be cutting some of that off so I'm not worried. And I'm just going to take a little bit of that green and mix it further up as well. There we go. Really pleased with that because that looks quite like a C to me. If you wanted, you could actually use watercolour pencils in it as well and just move those around. And then the key thing with this is make sure it's nice and dry before you do the next stage. And I might just put um, my heat gun over that to make sure it is. I'm just going to make sure my brush is clean, ready for next time. And there you have it. Really simple, but look at that lovely background that that then gives. Make sure my block's clean. We can move on to the next stage once it's dry. So I'm just going to leave you a second while I dry this with a heat gun and I'll be back in a minute to show you the next stage. Okay, so that's nice and dry now. So now I'm going to use, I'm using Knight of Navy and um, because that's my basic colour scheme, as you've already seen. And I've got, these are just little um, seagulls <laughs> that are from the, the stamps that I've got. What's it called, the stamps? I can't remember. Sailing Home. That's right. So um, I know from the previous card that I, just to show you my fingers, I'm going to use this sort of bit. So I want to make sure that my seagulls are really about in the middle there and I'm going to have some uh, a boat sailing along so we'll have some more seagulls up there there we go and perhaps some ooh, have some down here because the boat's going to be sailing the other way okay so that is the seagulls And I've already stamped my boat and I could, I suppose, colour behind that. So there's a bit of colour in it, but I don't think that really matters because it's going to be a centrepiece on the card anyway. So the next stage is to actually cut this up. And this is where you need to be quite careful and we need to cut it up. And then I also need to cut the panels to go behind. So as you can see from this one I've made before, I've cut the watercolour panel in different sizes and different shapes and then the, each each of them has a little layer on so I'm going to go through those quite carefully so the first thing is I need to cut this um, to the right size let me just give myself a bit of space here and bring this in and the size I needed is I want it to be three and a half inches tall and four and an eighth wide so that is about four and three quarters at the moment. So I'm going to cut off this bit because I didn't quite get the colour going right at the side. So I'm going to cut off each edge a little bit. So just a little bit off each edge. There we go. Let's see how big that is now. So that is, because I can use my thing here, so that's four and just over a quarter. So it's four and three eighths and I want it to be nearer four and an eighth. So I'm going to take uh, another little bit off this side and again probably on this side so I want it to be four and an eighth so I'm just going to take another little sliver off there and that gives me four and an eighth across now the height of it it needs to be three and a half inches tall the moment it's four inches so again I'm going to cut a little bit off the top but I think I'm going to cut most of it from the bottom so I'm just going to cut a little bit off the top there 
And I like to do this rather than start with the piece the same size, just because of the watercolouring to make sure, because at the very edge, it's very difficult to get it looking nice. So three and a half I need, so I measure on there, and then I can just cut a little bit off the bottom. And that gives me the card that I need. So this is the size we need to then cut it up. And my recommendation for cutting it is we're going to cut from the edges and do the edge panels, then the second in panels, then the third in panels, and then that leaves the centre panel. So uh, the way I've found easiest to do this, and then once we've done that, we're going to trim the length down for each panel. So we'll do the panel each. So um, what we need to do, we need to, um, the first strip that we want at the side there is going to be half an inch wide so i'm going to start off and because our trimmers have the measurements over this side too i can put it over to half an inch and then cut there so that's my first panel and i'm going to be very careful and put it i'm going to put it out of where's my <laughs> i think it's in screen there so it can stay over there so that's my first one and i found the easiest way to do these is then turn it over so i've turned it through 180 degrees and do the same thing for the other side so i need it to be half an inch so there we have it at half an inch and that's the two edge bits there so then the next bit i need to cut the second one is five eighths of an inch so again i can go up four fifths five fifths so again, I can do that both sides. So that's there, do it the other side. Five eighths is there. So that's my second panel. My third panel, I go back again, um, one inch wide. So, uh, sorry, half an inch wide. So go to half an inch. Again, oh, make sure it's straight gets more difficult to hold as we get closer in. Turn it round again, do my other half inch, get it measured, make sure it's straight. Yep. And then that leaves my final panel in the centre, which is an inch wide, as you can see. So that is all my panels cut. Once we've cut them, we're now going to trim them down. So we're going to take the two edge panels first and I'm going to cut three quarters of an inch off the top and off the bottom. So move it to three quarters of an inch, cut off the top, turn it round and do the same on the bottom. So remember which side you're doing. So that was my right hand side one. So now I'm going to do my left hand side one in the same way, cutting three quarters of an inch off top and bottom. And then for each of the next two panels, we're going to cut off a quarter of an inch less, if you like. So I've started off with three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to take half an inch off the next two panels. So I'm going to do the left hand side one first, cutting off half an inch at top and at the bottom of that panel. So that's the left hand one, then do the right hand one in the same. So it's half an inch off, make sure that's on, there we go. Half an inch there, and at the bottom half an inch as well. So all these measurements are in the blog below, so on my website if you're watching on YouTube. <laughs> so the final one is going to be a quarter of an inch. So again, top and bottom on that side and on the other side. Top and bottom. So I move this out of the way and tip those into the bin. There we go, get rid of those. So you can see here that I've got all my panels cut to the right size. They do look tiny, don't they? But they are, that's right. So you can still see my picture there. So now the next stage is to cut all the pieces of um, Knight of Navy to act as the backing for the panel. And it's a really nice way to use up all your scraps. So again, I'm gonna just move those to the side Keep them in order, make sure I don't mess those up, then we'll cut the bits for the panel. So the bits for the panel, panels the first, first and the last, 
So the start and the end ones, these little ones here. I'm get those out of order, I'm not careful. Let me just make sure they stay there, that's it. So the, the outside panels are going to be five eighths of an inch by two and one eighth of an inch. So I'm going to cut my two and one eighth of an inch first. That's two and one eighth, two and one eighth. And then I can make sure they're just five eighths of an inch. So again, it gets it gets a little bit fiddly. Just take your time, make sure it's lined up, lined up and straight, and then gently bring this down and that will put it in the right place. So that's my first panel, which goes behind that one. Then I'll do oh, <laughs> these bits off. The same thing with this one, five eighths of an inch. And that is the other outside one. Yeah, so you can see I've got those two there. So the next one I need to be um, two and five eighths inches now by uh, three quarters of an inch. So two and five eighths of an inch is there. And this time it's by three quarters of an inch. So again, make sure it's straight. Love the lines on these trimmers because they do make it so easy to make sure everything's lined up straight. So that's for the second panel there. Do the same with this one. So two and five eighths by three quarters of an inch. And that is my second panel. Now, if you remember, our third one was slightly narrower again. So this one needs to be three and one eighths inches. I don't think that's going to be long enough. No, it's not. So I need another bit. There we go. So three and one eighth, which is two little marks there. Three and one eighth. So I'll probably get two out of this because they're both five eighths of an inch. So I wonder if I can. So if I make that one five eighths, yeah, I will get both out. I'll need to trim both, but that's fine. So that's the first one, and then another one at five eighths, which is there. Again, make sure it's straight. So those are my next two. So there we go. And then I just have to cut the panel for the centre one. And the centre panel uh, needs to be three and five eighths of an inch. So I go right up here, three and five eighths. And this time it measures one and one eighth. If you remember, the um, final panel was one inch wide. So we just need it one eighth of an inch wider for the background panel. OK, so that is all the awkward cutting you have to do. Let me just get rid of these bits. Some of these aren't useful, so can just go straight in the bin. So now you can see, hopefully, that I've got all my panels and their backgrounds. So the next stage is to stick those together, which I'll do very make the video go fast because you don't need to see me doing that. And then I'll show you the trick for getting it centered on the front panel. So I'm going to stick all my panels together now and I'll be back in a minute. OK, so I've stuck all the panels together. I've stuck my watercolour on top of each of the um, Knight of Navy uh, layers there and I've uh, stuck all my already stamped bits here. Um, I've stamped this greeting direct on here because when I made this one, I actually forgot to stamp the greeting on, so I ended up having to stick it on um, extra. And of course, it hides some of the panels, which is a little bit pointless. So on this one, I worked out that this particular greeting which is from the current sending set. What's it called? It's got the big sending on it. Anyway, it's from there. <laughs> Can't remember, sorry. But small, a small one there will actually fit in the space below the panel, so it's not going to get in the way of showing the panels. So how to put the panels on? And again, I've made sure I've got them still in order. I'm going to measure halfway along here. So we know that's 13.8. So if I actually put it point one either side then I can use seven and that's going to be my centre point and the same at the bottom I'm going to measure up and then just 
little tiny pencil mark at seven. So I know that those two points are the center point and I'm going to stick the first, this first one on, um, the center, the center one, the middle one on first to make sure it's in the center and then all the rest will just simply sit by the side so it makes it dead easy because <laughs> it's if I started from one side there is no way I would get them on evenly so I've got my two marks here and I'm going to make sure that I've got this in the center with the same gap at the top and the bottom and there we know that that is right in the middle so I can now stick all the other pieces on and know that I've got them even and they're properly spaced out across the card so again you don't need to see me doing all this gluing and sticking. So I'll uh, rush through this bit to show you. When you're putting these, I'll show you this one, because when you're putting them on, you want to leave a tiny gap. Um, just I use by eye. You could measure if you wanted, but just making sure the gap in is the same. And because I've got horizon line, I actually can use that to line them up so I know that they're in the right place. So there we are. They're all stuck on. Um, rough, the cap's roughly right. <laughs> um, probably my measurement wasn't too great. So now all I need to do is just take in my ordinary rubber. And I'm just going to rub off that pencil mark I made at the top and at the bottom. And no one would ever know anymore. There we go. So all that remains is me to put my boat on on some dimensionals probably. But looking at it now, I think what I'm going to do is go and re-stamp that and stamp it on some vellum because I think it would look actually better. On this one, I've used um, some of the gorgeous shimmer vellum um, to make the dragonfly in the center of that one. Again, I've used a, a bit of a horizon line to help me line up these right. You can obviously use completely different colors, make them out of whatever you wanted. But here are the two, bring that already stamped envelope in so you can see them both. Here are the two I've made. The only difference is having stamped that, I don't actually like that just stamped. So I'm going to go and restamp it on vellum uh, to make the final card. So I hope you enjoyed this little technique. The difficult bit with it is the measuring. Just make sure you get those right. And I think they make absolutely stunning, but really actually quite simple cards and use this lovely watercolour technique. So here's my finished card. Um, this is with the boat stamped on stays on onto vellum and I think that looks a lot better than the one I'd had originally. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I do hope you have a go at this card because it's good fun to make and um, please do subscribe on my channel so you see all my other makes and let me know what you come up with. Bye for now.